I ask that the Congress declare that since the unprovoked and dastardly attack by Japan on Sunday, December 7th, 1941, a state of war has existed between the United States and the Japanese Empire. Pearl Harbor, the island of Oahu, Hawaii, December 7th, 1941. America suffers from one of the most brutal and devastating attacks in its history. The attackers were easily identified as Air Force pilots and naval members from the Pacific Empire of Japan. The attack would leave 2,335 servicemen killed and 1,143 wounded with 68 civilians killed and 35 wounded. Military assets lost include four battleships sunk, four damaged, three cruisers and three destroyers damaged, along with scores of aircraft damaged or destroyed. The Japanese lost 29 aircraft and 64 total killed, with four midget submarines sunk and one grounded. The attack was prompted following various antagonizing actions made by the United States against Japan's imperial ambitions, such as freezing financial assets and industrial ones after the seizure of French Indochina, now Vietnam, Cambodia, and Laos. Japan's Admiral Isoroku Yamamoto is quoted as saying, I can run wild for six months. After that, I have no expectations of success. Referring to Japan's window of opportunity to grow its empire while America rebuilds. However, what Yamamoto did not count on is how the US would retaliate. The attack on Pearl Harbor woke a monster in the American populace. With an unprovoked attack against a nation that left thousands dead and wounded, the nation's anger boiled over and America officially entered the Second World War. We've already explained this event along with the North African and European campaigns of World War II in our D-Day 75th anniversary documentary back in 2019, but the Pacific remains open for us to look at. As Yamamoto has predicted, the window given from the Pearl Harbor attack allowed for an easier advance capturing territory in the Pacific, such as Indonesia, Wake Island, which became the besieged by the Japanese immediately after Pearl Harbor, Thailand, the Philippines, threatening invasion on Australia, and thrusting deeper into the Chinese mainland, pillaging and murdering anyone who stood in their way. When Japan finally set its sights on the islands of Midway, the Americans were finally ready for a rematch. Now rebuilt and stronger than ever, the fleet consisted of three aircraft carriers, seven heavy cruisers, one light cruiser, 15 destroyers, 233 carrier-based aircraft, 127 land aircraft on the islands, and 16 submarines, compared to Japan's fleet of four carriers, two battleships, two heavy cruisers, one light cruiser, 12 destroyers, 16 float planes, and 248 carrier-based aircraft. When the battle was met, the Japanese were not completely caught off guard by the U.S. defensive bombing attacks against them, which left many American forces dead following the first wave. But the second wave did catch them with their backs turned, leading to the sinking of all four aircraft carriers and all aircraft. Midway would be the first major American victory of the Pacific Theater. Following the Battle of Midway, the U.S. under the command of General Douglas MacArthur, Fleet Admirals Chester Nimitz and William Halsey Jr. embarked on a campaign of island hopping their way into removing the Japanese forces, starting just two months after Midway at Guadalcanal, then to the Marshall Islands, then the Mariana Islands, Palau, Iwo Jima, and finally in spring 1945, the island of Okinawa, directly south of the Japanese mainland, falls to the American forces and not long after, Yamato battleship, the pride and joy of the Japanese Navy and one of the most powerful battleships ever constructed, was destroyed in the East China Sea. This campaign, however, was not without hardship. Okinawa especially left up to 20,000 American forces dead and up to 300,000 Japanese soldiers and civilians dead from battle, kamikaze, suicide land bombing, or leaping to their deaths to save themselves from the monster they feared they created. Now the final challenge of the war was in sight, the invasion and anticipated capitulation of the Japanese home islands. 
Various military advisors to the president at the time, Harry S. Truman, following the death of Franklin Roosevelt in April 1945, showed that the U.S. would lose up to over at least one million men during this invasion, and following the previous battles along the various bombings of Japan, especially the infamous fire bombings of Tokyo orchestrated under the direction of Curtis LeMay, shows that the Japanese are resilient and persistent and will not go down till every last one of them is killed. Another alternative was needed to avoid any unnecessary casualties and end this war sooner than later. Luckily for Truman, Albert Einstein's letter to Roosevelt, sent before the Second World War erupted, led to the creation of a certain project in the New Mexico desert, the Manhattan Project. Following the discovery of nuclear fission by German chemists Otto Hahn and Fritz Strassmann in 1938, the Allied forces became worried about the possibility of the Germans creating an atomic weapon and started the race for the bomb that would be developed in Los Alamos under the eyes of Julius Robert Oppenheimer and Lieutenant General Leslie R. Groves, Jr. The project itself would not be condensed to the New Mexico desert, but across the country including Richland, Washington, Oak Ridge, Tennessee, where the project had its district headquarters located, and the most famous spot of the project, Alamogordo, New Mexico, where tests were conducted. The reason for such an expansive amount of locations is the varying locations of needed resources such as uranium, plutonium, and heavy water. Prior to any nuclear-based device test, the team at Los Alamos decided to try out a more controlled test on May 7, 1945 of known explosive devices called the 100-ton test, which was 0.1 kilotons of TNT and was a trial run for what was to come two months later. Two designs were given the green light for the nuclear devices, one a uranium gun-type fission weapon where a hollow uranium bullet is fired through a barrel towards a cylinder target at the end which would end in the explosion chain reaction the world would witness later dropped on Hiroshima. The second device was a plutonium implosion device where an initiator encased in plutonium and high explosive lenses would create an implosion and force the plutonium into its cell and cause a reaction that will be seen at Alamogordo in the Trinity test and on Nagasaki. Due to the unknown probability of the plutonium implosion device actually working, the team at Los Alamos decided to test out the device in what would be called the Trinity Test. This device would be placed on top of a tower in the middle of the Alamogordo Desert south of Los Alamos. A couple of notable scientists on the project were genuinely concerned of the incoming test of the first nuclear device ever detonated in the world. They feared the composition would actually ignite the air in the area and practically kill everyone on Earth by setting it on fire. Either way, the test proceeded and was conducted on July 16, 1945. The test didn't end with extinction, but with one of the biggest purposely made explosions in human history at that time. With a yield of 21 kilotons, the explosion completely wiped out the tower and left the crater half a mile across, and the explosion itself turned the sand within the radius of ground zero into a green glass, later to be called tritatite, which still contains traces of radioactivity to this day. Now knowing that the implosion device works, plans proceed to use it on Japan after getting clearance from President Truman. The Japanese city of Hiroshima was a target to the US due to its Army Marine headquarters along with its large military depots and key shipping centers. The city was also left mostly untouched by the various bombings on the mainland of Japan having most of its populace of around 345,000 people unscathed. On Monday, August 6, 1945, 
The Boeing B-29 Super Fortress, the Enola Gay, along with six other aircraft, flew over Hiroshima and dropped the uranium gun-type fission bomb named Little Boy over the city. Forty-five seconds after leaving the bomb bay of the Enola Gay, the city of Hiroshima was engulfed by 15 kilotons of TNT right on top of it, eviscerating anyone and everything within the immediate blast zone and killing more people and damaging buildings miles away. The blast was said to have killed around 60,000 people instantly, with another 100,000 from burns, radiation, and other causes related to the bombing and a resulting firestorm that would cause further devastation to the area. The bombing confused the Japanese. They were too bewildered and refused to believe that one bomb caused that much destruction. This refusal would be retracted a day later, but they would still not surrender. This would lead to the use of Fat Man on Nagasaki. The city of Nagasaki had one of the largest seaports of South Japan and had major industrial interests to the Japanese war effort. The city was also spared from most previous bombings due to complicated geography during night raids, but had been hit a few times. Nagasaki was originally the secondary target of the bombing mission, with the city of Kokora being the primary target. Due to bad visibility over Kokora, the team of B-29s led by weapon delivery craft Boxcar headed towards Nagasaki. Nagasaki also had poor visibility, but at one moment a break in the clouds showed up right above the city and the Fat Man implosion bomb was dropped. Forty-seven seconds later, the mushroom cloud following the 21 kiloton nuclear explosion became visible to the crew. 40,000 people were killed instantly in the explosion range, with 40,000 more to follow from connected causes, including POWs from America, Netherlands, and Britain. Even after the bombing, the crew of Boxcar would still have issues on landing on a single approach on Okinawa following depleting fuel issues, but after landing, their mission was done. In both Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the major medical facilities were wiped out or were severely unsuitable in treating wounded and many makeshift facilities were made. Another plutonium implosion bomb was expected to be used around August 19th, with more later on to be used on Japanese cities, especially the capital, Tokyo. These plans, however, would be scrapped following Japanese Emperor Hirohito's decision to surrender on the 15th of August, later to be known as VJ or Victory Over Japan Day. The bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki were the first and so far only times nuclear weapons have ever been used in warfare. The use of these weapons still left around 200,000 dead and even more wounded from these devices. But compared to the previous statistics posed by the US military, it had around at most 2% of the expected Japanese casualties of 10 million from a full-on land invasion, along with no fighting US casualties. However, Many still see these attacks as a war crime due to the use of the weapons along with the impacts they would have in the future. Either way, on September 2nd, 1945, Japan officially surrenders and World War II officially ends after six years and one day of open warfare and several more of prelude conflicts such as the Second Italo-Abyssinian War, Second Sino-Japanese War, and the Spanish Civil War. Japan would remain under the influence and recipient of aid and rebuilding by the United States unlike its Axis counterparts of Austria and Germany who ended up split between Allied forces and other Eastern European nations that ended up under the sphere of Soviet influence. The spheres of influence generated between the United States and the Soviet Union following World War II would become so close it practically shared a border everywhere. And now with the United States' new weapon, the atomic bomb, a new age has been entered, but at the same time, a new, more advanced conflict has begun.